Hey, it's Nitz. Welcome back to Crash Test Gaming, and we are picking back up with a Rolling Thunder Incorporated, our arms merchants. Currently, we are fulfilling a contract where we left off last time anyway. We're fulfilling a contract of our Mark Fives with their Skippy variant with the two six pounder guns. We've got eight in storage. We are currently producing six more, and then we've got some resources coming from North America in six days 72 tons of them. Uh, and then we'll be able to produce even more skippies to make the 30 we need to fulfill the contract. And we are currently researching the enhanced trucks for our tracks, trucks, tracks for our Liberty tank, which um, is 30 days away. After that, we will be looking at getting the central cab built and the combo sponsons for our monster tank that we want to have put together at the end. We might even look at uh, improved rivets. So they have um, not, a, not a huge advantage over the bolts, but it will be a advantage, and that will pretty much be the strongest tank I think we'll be able to make. We can also hope and pray that we get our hands on an A7V German tank so we can make a huge battle bus to tear around the course. And uh, we already have the, en uh, the engine designed and ready to go. So once those tracks are ready and the cab, we will start working on a design. On the design side of things, we've got an FT-17 currently being designed. And after that, we will want to start putting the FT-17 turret onto some of our other tanks. So we will want a Schneider, which is our, if I can find it, you end up getting quite a few different models. Yeah, the Schneider, we want to put a, a turret on the top there, which is possible. And also to the Hornet, we want to design a Hornet that can fit a turret onto the top and also stay under the weight limit of 20 tonnes, which will be close because we've only got 1.2 tonnes to spare with the current design. So we will be looking into putting turrets pretty much on everything we can put a turret on with the, um, with the gun from the FT-17. So we'll be looking at the, not the Ochkiss, but the, the Putu SA-18. So we've got a design of the Mark I a gun there, and that will give our medium tanks all the ability the ability to take on other tanks and succeed. So this Girod turret with the gun onto our Whippet, onto our Hornet, um, Drop Bear, will be our next goal as soon as our FT design is finished, which will happen in 12 days. So we will continue on that. Okay, and our FT-17 is designed. So we shall go into the design process and we will rename this to the Quokka Revision H for the, oh no, this is a soft attack for the having a machine gun instead of a anti-tank weapon connected to it. I doubt we're going to be producing many of these, but we are going to... It does have very good frontal armour, so it will be interesting to see if any contracts come up that this will slot into. And now... Okay, so our latest Quokka is designed, the FT Soft Attack variant that we were working on. I'm not sure if we're ever going to sell this to anyone, but... Um, as you can see, it's got a machine gun instead of the anti-tank weapon there. So if we need soft attack and a well-armoured front and a light tank, this comes in at 12 tonnes. This will be the tank for it, but it's a very specialised role, so we might not ever use this design, but it's good to have it just in case. So we will go to the Bilby, and we want to update this design. So we, we might even want to remake the hole for this. And 
and we'll probably want to what weight does the like different tracks give us? No, that's 11 tons. So the whippet tracks give us 16 tons. We we might want to remake these tracks. We'll see what the final final thing turns out like. We'll put a a steel turret on it and the anti-tank gun. So that's what the tank will look like. We need to we can fit an extra crew member, which we will want to turn into a gunner. But it's still very cramped for the crew space there with I mean, we could make this guy a gunner mechanic, except I don't think he can be a gunner mechanic there. This guy can be a gunner mechanic. So that gives us gunner and mechanic both in red. And if we just make him a gunner, at least the gunner turns to yellow, but we've got red mechanic. So let's make this an offensive machine. So we want the gunners in there. And we can pack this full with ammunition, plenty of ammunition space. We can have HE and AP ammo. Put the latest petrol in. Oh, we've got four slots for our main gun ammo. That seems very generous for such a small cramped tank. But uh, we don't have a fourth type, so maybe when we get canister shot, we can throw canister shot in there as well. So I think we will save the clone, and we'll come back to it, because we might have a look at engineering a, a new base hull as well for that, because it's been a while since we did the whippet hull. So... Yeah, that's just an RHA steel hull. So if we uh, go back to the medium whippet hull and start from scratch, we can put FHA steel, many different uh, assembly types. We'll go for the German bolts. We get a bit more repairability or a bit more crew safety. I think this is a a pretty safe tank as it is, so we will go for the extra repairability. Go for ammo storage. We will go for the best possible site. External communications. It'll be interesting to see what the weight's like. We'll put the best of everything on this tank at the moment and not worry too much about weight and see if it comes in under the the weight limit of the tracks will be the interesting thing to find out I can't remember off the top of my head how much weight we've got to go with the ventilation mark 2 seems like the winner there the German one's a little bit lighter but a little less comfortable for the crew the hull mark 3 Looks pretty good. So that's eight crew comfort. And the whole door, we will stick with the old reliable Mark II. We probably should put some wheels on it, but uh, for the stats, but we won't just because of the way it looks. And we will call this. Oh, this isn't the final tank, so it doesn't matter what we call it. Just call it the Bill B3 design. That's going to be nine days, and then we will design our Whippet, and we've got 18 days left on the tracks for the Liberty. So we'll get moving. The Italians are now looking at exploitation tanks, so they're looking at 20-ton uh, tanks, quick tanks, with, uh, I believe, soft attack, the exploitation tank design. 
And we have got ever developing competition with the FCM being developed. Okay, so our hull design is complete. We shall go to the design menu and cross our fingers that this is going to come in under weight. So where is our... Th oh no, I'm looking at Hornets. Wrong. What a goose. So we want to... The Bilby Mark Three. Oh, and it's 900 kilos overweight with that good armor on it and the turret. So we're going to have to figure out where we're going to shave off basically a ton of weight with this design. Mm. We'll have to do that back in engineering. And we can sacrifice some mobility in the tracks, I guess, if we do a redesign on the the tracks. But can we save any weight? Because I, I remember going pretty light. It's 32 kilos. Mud shoots are not, do not weigh a ton. Can we save much weight on the rollers? Not really. We If we go with the German rollers, we save... 500 kilos and we didn't put the track inserts on so we'll start with that and then where are we going to save the rest of the weight we'll have to go back and design another hole so I mean we could make it out of iron instead of FHA steel but that takes away a ton of the protection The site's 200 kilos. We don't really want to wait. I mean, we could put... That's a lot of aiming and awareness that we're not going to have if we take that off. The comms are pretty high stats. That doesn't weigh much. I mean, we could take off the fuel and make it a short-range only tank. But that's still not enough weight. So I think if we take it down to iron, so it's not going to be a, a great protection tank. So it's going to use the added firepower. And I, I, I guess what we're going to bank on here is that the, the iron is enough to stop machine gun bullets. And the turret will allow it to take on other vehicles. So if it comes up against other machine gun armed medium tanks, it'll destroy them. But otherwise, it's not going to be very well protected. So we'll save that design. Medium with Mark Three, and we'll get on designing that after these new tracks are designed, which is in four days. So we quickly shoot ahead. Oh, British Empire captured another tank. So let's go see what we're going to receive from... Let's hope it's an interesting tank. So trophies. So this looks like a 75mm French tank. So we will buy that. And we will go to reverse engineering... And what to pull apart first? It's got Whippet running gear on it. That is interesting. The French have our technology. Oh my. The dirty French. They stole our Whippet tracks. The saint Chamond. So, we've got a better engine than that. Crew requirements for attributes on 132, two and a half tons. Heavy. We will start with the St. Chamond body and we will slowly 
and disassemble all the parts. That's going to take 26 days to pull that apart. So that was a pickup. It wasn't the German A7V, but we will pull it apart anyway. And the tracks are ready, so we will start working on the Whippet hull that's lightweight. So the Whippet Mark III, this is only made out of iron. But we will be counting on it being a more powerful medium tank than its competition and it will be under 16 tonnes. So quite lightweight, not super lightweight like our, our cane toad which is under 10 tonnes but hopefully it will fill a need out in the market. We're 12 days away from production finishing and 5 days away from the running gear for our Liberty. And we'll be back. So the enhanced running gear has finished off under mobility there. So we now need to decide what we're going to work on next. We can go for the central cab or the combo turret. That'll give us a pretty strong offensive tank. We'll have two machine guns and two guns. I'm not sure yet what the central cab will fit. And whether it's worth going on the Mark II, we probably could also do with better rounds, but we will work towards getting our tank finished. And I think once we've got the, the combo turret and we've got the central cab finished, We'll have the bones of, except for a few things we could probably do in firepower, we'll have the bones of our Liberty tank, our international tank, that will be the pinnacle achievement for this playthrough of Rolling Thunder and pretty much finish off the tech tree of what's available at the moment. So I'm still playing this on the press release uh, copy of the game that I received before the early access actually dropped but the early access has dropped uh, yesterday for this game and unfortunately my save games weren't compatible so I'm going to continue this playthrough on uh, one computer with the press uh, release of the game and uh, I'll be playing myself on uh, the early access release of the uh, game personally but once we finish up this one hopefully we'll get a content patch for the game moving into the interwar period and we'll do another playthrough through that so anyway so the whippet hole's ready we will get our engineers straight back to work and they will be working on the running gear for our Liberty, if I can find the right set of tracks for that, land ship. So these should be a massive, and we've got the Idler Mark 6, we've got four ton road wheels for this tank. I suppose weight is not going to be an issue with this tank. It's going to weigh a ton. And this Brocket Mark VI has got the greatest agility, which will be odd for such a big tank. The track inserts, we shall just go for the heaviest, the most expensive, and the best for this tank. We will not be trying to save money or pulling punches anywhere. So Landship Mark 1 tracks, 13 days away. We'll get our engineers working on that. We will go to the design of our new Bilby. So we should now be able to put the Bilby Mark 3 in. Oh, it's still over. Oh, tracks, we have the Whippet, the new set of Whippet tracks that we made that will be lighter and we come in with 500 kilos to spare so 15 tons that comes in the crew is still super cramped although we get pretty good crew performance out of this tank as you can see we've got the the malices from being cramped there but uh still pretty good stats down the down the side this is not going to be a particularly well armored tank 
but in firepower and mobility it should be a very strong so it is now not the clone we will call this the Mark B Bilby 3 so this is the third iteration of the Bilby and we've got a turret on top so we will assign that and then if we have spare time with our engineers we'll, we'll probably be designing the land ship soon next up for reinvigorating will be the Schneider we, I'm guessing we're also going to have to rebuild the central hull on that and we will that engine is the only engine allowed in that tank so we'll have to rebuild the engine as well because our engines have advanced a lot since since we last designed the Schneider engine and we will put the turret on the top of that and see how that turns out and that's going to struggle to stay under 20 tons as well as a as a medium tank so that starts creeping into the vanguard tent speciality and although it's got good armor it's got about the equivalent armor of a mark 5 tank it does not have the great offensive capability with only the 147 millimeter gun and two machine guns so the the turret will add a sa18 gun but it still will be a bit underdone against the competition because they've got so much more weight to play within making them offensive weapons but uh we will we'll just create we'll create a horror ugly tank just for the fun of doing it so we will head back to the factory and get working on the Bilby Mark III. We've got uh, 81 days away on the combo turret. Oh, that's a lot of days. So we've finished production of the Skippy. We will be sending that off to the Brits. We'll send off 30 of them. And they're due on the 26th of the 11th. We'll do that with about three weeks to spare. So we'll have more cash coming in, which reminds me, I have been very remiss. And this is uh, this is one thing I'm not too happy about, unless it's changed. Paying back the loan. We have to repay all the interest. So there's no, there's no benefit to paying back early, which... You still need to make... Payoff comes at a small extra fee on top of the loan. So I need to pay off the entirety of the loan with the interest calculated out to the original date. That's, that seems odd. That seems odd. Unless I'm not understanding this right. Please, if I'm understanding this incorrectly, point it out to me in the comments. But I'm pretty sure that we're not getting any discount for paying back early. Which, hmm, yes. Why would you pay it back early? I mean, you've still got to pay all of the interest. I mean, just to have a clean slate? Seems a bit odd. Anyway, we'll pay that off. We've still got over $7 million in the bank. We're not in any danger. We should probably order in more goods while I'm here, but I shall get working on that. Uh, we will go from Africa. Sign that, that'll be coming in soon. And we will... And we have a new supply contract coming in for exploitation tanks. Uh, luckily, uh, we have uh, some uh, drop bears. I think we've got 21 of them currently in storage. We'll need to produce nine more, so we will make 30 of them. We can cut the due time pretty slim and we'll make about 35,000 per per tank so we're pretty much doubling our money it's not a massive profit but we'll take the contract we've pretty much got the tanks in hand to supply we do need to redesign a new drop bear and maybe add some more items to the hull of that tank 
which we haven't uh, haven't kept up with completely with our engineering. So we shall send off for that. And we've got a another contract which came in a bit ago, and I seem to have forgotten about. So there's ten days remaining on the application for that contract. Just 20 tanks, soft attack, vanguard design, so heavy tanks with machine gun focus. We should be able to send maybe one of our old attacks. The Echidna could probably do that. So that's a, that's a Maphrodite tank. It's quite old now. We haven't been keeping that up to date either, but we should be able to produce them pretty quickly. And we should, uh, if we just send 20 off and give ourselves as long as possible... We will make more money off the Echidna, I think, than we just did with the Drop Bears. So that's still a good piece of tech, even though it's nowhere near our latest tech as we're moving towards a full landship design. But seeing as we don't have any weapon systems for that yet, we can't really command much in the way of money to justify spending the money on the engine and the tracks and the hull for that. But uh, if we do this contract, we should be able to make... 45,000 plus and put it out to a date that gives us plenty of time to produce them. We'll we'll finish off the drop bears first and then we'll get on producing those. It shouldn't take too long. I think nine drop bears should take about nine days to produce and 20 echidnas should only take a month. So we'll send off for those two contracts and we will see if they come in. And get the time rolling should be just around the corner for them to tell us that we uh, we hopefully win it. I mean, we know we're going to win it. Our offers were in the green. This this part of the game does need does need work. I'm not sure how you're going to give the player intelligence of a roundabout figure to to bid for to to make it worth a bit of unknown, a bit of competition, a bit of randomness to the contract system. But uh, the the one thing's for sure, the current system is t too easy to game, and we will uh, we'll design a new Hornet. Pretty much, just throw the best of everything into into it, and see what sort of weight we come up with. Because I know we've got uh, just over a ton to work with. Uh, I did mention earlier. I said put a turret on the Hornet. You can't put a turret on the Hornet. I'll just point that out. I I did figure that out two seconds after I said it. So. We are going to go with a top steel, top protected Hornet. So it's going to be a soft power machine. And we don't really have a way of giving it a heart attack apart from the AP ammo. And uh, this bundle of sticks on top will be the best roof option. It is quite heavy though. So it is going to be interesting to see where this comes out weight wise. I think we've got about 1.2 tons to play with. So if... A fair bit of that 300 tons will get taken up by the upgrade in steel. And, I mean, these these wheels are worth a lot in stats. Um, I just find it odd because historically they didn't work and they were taken off the tanks. Um, but I guess these old British tanks, a lot of the photos do show the wheels on it. So they are a characteristic of the tanks. And they are worthwhile putting on in the game just for the stats. But... I don't like the look of them. That's that's a terrible, terrible way to design a tank. Oh, I'm not going to put this on because I don't like the look of it. But I think in this case, we don't want the weight to go over 20 tonnes. So to save weight, they've got to go. They've got to go. I can't justify the fashion choice for the tank. Fashion choice for a tank. Um, that is a bit odd. That is a bit odd. Anyway... That, uh, that looks like a good design. We'll get the engineers working on that. And uh, that will be ready in 15 days. And we will get time moving again. All right. So we are working on the new Hornet hull. And we have our tank in for reverse engineering. It's got whipper tracks. Oh, that is odd. And a big 75mm cannon. I'm going to have to rip that apart. And oh, we will reverse engineer the cannon next, I think. 52 days. 52 days to pull apart the gun. Oh, well, our engineers are now working on it. That means we can build ourselves the Saint-Germain, or the British version of a Saint-Germain. 
and we will have a look at what sort of design we can make, what sort of monster will we be looking at for that tank, just to, to know what sort of tracks we can put on it and um, what sort of engine and what sort of gun it can hold. It looks like we're pretty open on the engines. We can put the big V12 for the land ship tanks into the St. Germond and we can put the whippet tracks on. Yeah, so this is the strange thing. The design we got off the French had the whippet tracks. But the whippet tracks can only take 16 tonnes. So if I put everything on here, will this tank is going to be overweight. But I have no other tracks to reverse engineer. What if I put a really small gun in it, like the SA-18? I can have the 75mm gun or I can have the SA-18 gun. If I load it full of machine guns... And th remember, this is no crew and no consumables. Uh, we're well overweight. Oh, it looks it looks really nice with those tracks, though. I've got to say, how are we going to get down on the weight so that we can use the whippet tracks and we can't use the hornet tracks? <laughs> they're, the, they're the ten ton tank tracks the 11 ton tracks i don't think they're gonna hold up the weight of a saint Germond. oh no how am i going to how am i going to manage this i mean the engine that i've put in it is super heavy don't get me wrong the engine's super heavy but i'm not going to save that much by changing the engine i'll i'll, I'll have a look at it later once i've got it fully uh fully reverse engineered and uh, we'll see if we can make something work. We must be able to get it under the 16 tonne. So if you put a small engine in it, I'm sure that's going to save us a number of tonnes somewhere and we will be able to squeeze it in under weight. I'm sure. Uh, we could always pull those tracks apart, I guess. But they are whippet tracks. They And, and apart from that, the French stole our tracks. The French came... And that, that means they've stolen one of our tanks and they've reverse engineered the tracks. Uh, never trust a Frenchman. You can never trust a Frenchman. I, I don't mean that, of course. That, uh, but uh, no, they're meant to be our allies. Well, not in this world, but once upon a time they were our allies. So I guess Rolling Thunder will have to roll on and we'll try and make something out of that tank eventually. But for now, we're working on... The bilby with the turret, and we uh, will need to free up some engineers somewhere along the line. And that's those contract offers that we just did accepted. So we have 26 drop bears, so we can send them off. Or Hang on, do I need to produce any more? No, three days to go. We'll quickly just pump that out. There we go. Should be done. We'll be able to send those tanks off. So, 30. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Oh, I've only made 29. Oh, don't tell me I've only made 29. I've only made 29. I'm going to make one more. It's going to be one more day. Back to the factory. One more tank. I can't count. Basic arithmetic is beyond me, clearly. So send that off. Now you bother. Fast forward one day. Send the tanks. Get paid. That sounds 30. We'll make a delivery date by the due date. Yeah, we've got time to spare. Plenty of time to spare. Send them off. And we will start making the echidnas. So this should be pretty quick. This is an old tank. I, I guess it, it, it just because it's an old tank, it's not going to be any quicker. 
It's still going to take however long it takes, and I am out of resources. Yeah, not enough iron. Nowhere near enough iron. What if I make ten? Still not enough iron. Nine? Eight. All right, there we go. So we're going to have to order more in. So, just how much from North America? How many days? So, that is 16 days. I wish I had a calendar that I could see everything on, like, how long it's going to take, like, how long I've got production set up for, how long things are going to take until they're ready, just in a calendar with everything written on a date, so I could just compare it easily without having to go between buildings and going through these forsaken loading screens that are between every i mean the, the loading screens themselves don't matter so much but it's just that one or two second pause halt every time you need to use them so i will order from europe uh, not too much just enough for maybe 10 tanks to tide us over while i get another order of goods in so that'll take Oh, I'm waiting on an order to come in. Where, oh, Africa. Six days. Oh, no. Oh, well, hopefully that'll be enough for, for a decent amount of tanks. That'll be enough for 10 tanks, I think. So we'll be able to keep producing at least when that comes in and maybe order a small amount from Europe after Africa so that we can keep production going the entire time. And we are just about there with the bilby, so we'll just quickly increase time, and we have the bilby Mark III. We'll just quickly check. No tanks in combat. So what's going on in the world really doesn't affect this company. We just care about what's going on with our tanks, and so the combat uh, button is enough for that. We pretty much can ignore most of the incoming information about treaties and world wars and things like that i guess when they fully implement diplomacy which they've got on their roadmap on the steam page it'll be interesting to see the alliances between various different countries instigating something that happened like in world war one where all the countries that ended up going to war because the web of alliances oh my god this is an auto cannon it yes Oh, this is priceless. It's turned my SA-18 into a machine gun. This has to be a bug. It feels powerful though. It feels very nice. Very, very nice. Oh my goodness. This is exquisite. So, uh, our little very tall whippet with the turret on top. I wonder how... Uh, I'm really interested to see if this is going to get round the course as well, by the way, because uh, I've got every every tank I can get around the course, and I'm not sure why, but with whippets, I just can't do it. The whippet has never got around the course for me. I'm not sure if it's just my PC. Maybe it's my designs. It's likely just my designs, but every other tank, no problem getting it around the course. Um, it probably has something to do with the slope angle that the whippets are able to climb. Uh, something statistically, but I mean the, it, they've got the same engines as what what's in the Hornets and what's been a lot in a lot of my Mark Ones. The the tracks are different, so that adds a lot to mobility, and that's where I think the difference probably is that the whippet tracks just aren't great at climbing out. But um, it'll be interesting to see how this. Um, this version of the tank goes because maybe making it heavy and putting more guns and turrets on top making it taller and putting the center of the crap higher oh wow that, uh, that feels good that feels very good oh my goodness auto cannon I would um I would love to be able to design a tank with an auto cannon World War One. That would absolutely destroy on the battlefield, I think. Um, statistically, I 
don't think that'll uh, that'll show in the rate of fire of this tank. It, the uh, it's it's just a glitch that's going to be in the test drive of the tank. But oh, that feels very satisfying to fire. Very satisfying. Very nice. This monstrosity of a whippet crossed with a an FT17 is a very odd odd uh, tank indeed. It's a, it's a pity we can't put the turret onto the Hornet design and uh, see if they had the same oh, oh, is it going to get up? Is it going to get up? Yeah. Oh, I thought for a minute this was going to get over. Oh, 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 it's almost there. It's just teetering on the edge. It's teetering on the edge. It's really struggling to make that last little and it's done it. It's done it. It's got past the second trench. Oh my goodness. That is excellent. Excellent. That's great. Okay, well, uh, I guess we will fast forward to the end of the course. As much fun as it is firing this gun. Uh, and we will see you towards the end of the course. And here we are, coming into the end of the course as we round the final corner. First time a whipper has ever successfully finished this course for me. That is very satisfying for it to eventually happen. That is great. And we're just uh, still waiting now for the combo sponsor to be finished off. And I think for today's episode, that's going to bring everything to an end. I'll be back tomorrow where we'll continue to make the final land ship uh, and finish off the technology tree and hopefully get the turret onto a few more tank designs and maybe even a saint Germond, a big barreling French tank to take around the course. But at any rate, I will see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for stopping by and watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye.